Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So, um, basically, there's I guess there's there's several things we can um we can talk about. So just just to get this right, just so that I understand it as well. So, are you offering um, people um one free taster session at this point in time? Yeah, well, I'm actually thinking about, so with the free taster, I think the purpose of that is more so to bring more awareness of like what's actually involved in the process and like mm-hmm. what to expect. So that's right. what, that's where I'm like setting the aspect of it because people need to be aware that once you start this process, you become very aware that you're carrying a lot of strain. So you mm-hmm. become aware of the health aspect of it. So initially, like most of my orders, they want to improve their eyesight that's their goal yeah um, the result the, the the result that they want is to fully regain their eyesight but once you once you start getting into this you become more aware that okay like you've neglected your health like mm. this project like it's gonna hurt you're gonna experience pain and the reason for that is because you become more aware of um your own eyes essentially it's like yeah for most people that are that have got blurred vision and wearing glasses they're very disconnected from themselves mm-hmm. and so a big part of this is actually just self-awareness and going within yeah. um the free taste is just like the awareness aspect so you understand like yeah. what you're getting involved into um yeah. and so you understand like the value of this um because even if you do like laser like if if you do like laser eye surgery or like contact lenses or anything else the, the root problem isn't solved they're just like quick fixes mm-hmm. um because actually, I remember you telling me quite, quite a nice way of thinking about this. So you'll obviously correct me, um, because th- this is your area. But basically, if you're um, if you have blurry vision and you're not wearing glasses, you know that there's something wrong with my eyes because I'm not seeing the world as I'm supposed to see it. So your brain gets the message that there's something wrong here. There's an issue. But then if you're wearing the glasses, because you're seeing the world in a way which um, which appears normal. Your brain thinks my eyes are fine because clearly mm. um, what I'm seeing is um, what I'm supposed to be seeing. And there's a bit of a confusion there because um, there's a reward system where your brain is like, I have good eyesight because I can see things. But really, you don't have good eyesight because you're relying on um, something artificial to actually see the world. And then what, what Tanvi is saying is that um, if you actually um, see the world with without the glasses, you see it for, you basically see it honestly. You actually realize that I have this um, issue with my eyesight, and you become more aware of it. And because there's a trauma connected to it in in some cases, then you can you can kind of feel those those emotions surfacing. Is that what you're saying? So the pain you're talking about, it's not necessarily it's not so much a physical pain; it's more an emotional pain that you're talking about yeah you hit the nail on the head on that one so um there's 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 both aspects to it because what you learn is you see the world largely through your mind so Mm -hmm. with the with the physical strain that's um yeah sorry uh yeah with the physical strain that's on your eyes it's sort of like a manifestation of you holding on to emotions from the past Mm. so there's certain emotions that you're holding on to that you don't want to let go and because you don't want to let go of them, that's why there's so much tension in your eyes. Because subconsciously, you don't want those muscles to be relaxed. Mm-hmm. You want those tension to be there because you feel that that's the right thing to do. Um, yeah. So, so that that's why um, this is quite difficult for most people. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, like, uh, like you, the techniques are all around relaxation. But mm. the problem with that is when people first hear about relaxation, it, they don't really like fully get it. It doesn't sync with them because they're disconnected and they don't really understand how they're holding on to that tension. Um, so it's it's essentially, yeah, you're, you're lying to yourself when you wear glasses because that feedback system gets um, disrupted. Like you don't have clear vision. Yeah. And this is not Unfortunately, this isn't really something that's like a quick fix where you can just instantly like be cured like overnight. You, um, this is more like why I'm wearing glasses because you need to slowly start to develop like weaker prescription glasses and like wean off of it. 
because you can't like if you're really dependent on your glasses you're not really going to feel safe mm -hmm. when you take those glasses off you are going to be afraid so that there's a huge like trust you need to start to rebuild again mm -hmm. um, and that's why like coaches are like for me that's why i'm here like help um develop yeah. the the trust in your natural eyesight again so what you're re what you're really saying because it's kind of just come to me now it's getting clearer what you're saying is that if a trauma is a root cause of blurry vision and you're wearing glasses, you're currently sheltering yourself from that trauma because you're not facing it. But when you take the glasses off and you realize your vision is blurry and you know, you're, you're living with blurry vision, then the, um, you're basically refacing something which almost broke you in the past. Mm, it's like, yeah. um, it's like maybe, you know, you had an experience with, let's say the trauma is a tiger, a tiger attack, right? Back when you was younger, you got attacked by a tiger and you was like, holy crap, I almost died in that situation. That's really, really, really scary. And then the memory of that, that event is literally stored in a different part of the brain. So I know that normal memories are in the hippocampus and sometimes traumatic memories are literally stored in a different part of the brain. So it's like locked away in a box and you're not even aware of it because you, you don't want to, to open that kind of worms and, and feel that that terror. So a lot of people um, stuff traumas down and turn a blind eye to it. And they think that that solves the problem. Oh, I, I, the trauma is not in my conscious memory, therefore problem solved. But clearly trauma does impact people's lives. And what I've learned in my line of work is that most humans are actually run by fear. We just run by fear. Most people just... Um, live this life in the matrix trying to keep themselves safe and and not confront their own inner demons and when you actually start to go to battle with your inner demons it's kind of scary but also you make progress and you're aware of the progress and you realize that um, you're a different person so a lot of it is is basically um, it's scary because you're facing something that um, terrified you in the past and and you're basically saying that now I'm ready to take on that thing that I once couldn't take on. Mm, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and like uh, one of the other things as well is that because for a lot of people that wear glasses, they sort of use those glasses as like a crutch, as like safety. Yeah. So a lot of the times they don't really even think about how bad their original eyesight was because they're sort of so reliant on their glasses to see. And so with, with natural vision improvement, you're just, you can't, you have to face reality that your eyesight is actually really bad. And so you really become like the magnitude of, and the seriousness of it yeah. really becomes yeah. more to the awareness that, okay, wait a minute. Wow. Without my glasses, I wouldn't even be able to survive. Like this is, this is not healthy. Like this is bad. Um, like, like imagine, like imagine if you didn't have your glasses anymore, like what would you do? You'd be like, <laughs> you'd be screwed pretty much. Yeah. And I guess you kind of hit a really good point there because because we humans, we spent most of our evolution as hunter-gatherers. So we didn't have access to modern technology. So on some level, like the caveman part of you, you know, you're aware of the fact that you're carrying this wound with you. And basically in that caveman context, the hunter-gatherer context, it could be life-threatening. If you couldn't see very well, imagine how hard it would be to hunt, um, you know, to basically provide for the group. It, it, it's major. It's, it's almost like, you know, if you suffered some debilitating injury of a physical injury, that would obviously set you back massively as well. So really, it's um, it's something that your, your, your inner chimp it feels a pain, doesn't it? Because, you know, even though we live in this modern society, really, we're wired. For you know, for the hunter gatherer times, and and when there's that disconnect, and you're basically um, living a life, and this is quite a, a deep sort of concept. But the way that I see it is, if you live in modern society um, as someone that would have thrived back in the hunter gatherer context, you also thrive in modern society. So if you're really confident, you're brave, you're determined, you pursue your purpose, you act in a way that would have resulted in success back in those times you start to succeed and feel good about yourself because that's just how we're wired there's this inner reward system to acting in a way which would 
help you to survive and, and reproduce back in those times. And there's also a punishment system, you could say, for acting in a way which would result in death in hunter-gatherer times, because there has to be. If you're basically, if you was being a coward, not facing your fears, um, not determined, being lazy, you, you should feel bad because otherwise you might die. Your, your brain thinks, I might die because if I don't get my um, shit together, maybe I don't get food. You know, so really you have to be so focused and committed and taking lots of action, facing fears to be successful. And if you're living a life in this way, you feel great about yourself automatically. So really, you know, what I believe Tanvi is tapping into is that, that transformation where um, you're basically acting in a way that would equal um, success in that hunter-gatherer context, which means that you're going to feel good about yourself. Yeah. And um, also to add to that is that usually we're like in our society, uh, technology is supposed to improve us and advance us and move us forward. Yeah. But in many ways, a lot of this technological, this technology that we're creating is actually setting us, we're going backwards and not going forwards. Yeah. Like with glasses, glasses are a piece of technology that we've invented supposedly to help improve our eyesight um, because we couldn't see, but it's actually caused our natural eyesight to become significantly worse. Like usually like if you're in the hunter gatherer uh, area, if you experience trauma, if you just like address that trauma and just face it, mm -hmm. your eyesight would just return back to normal. Yeah. But, but instead what we're doing is we're sort of allowing people to actually become weak. We're saying, okay, forget about the trauma. We could just hide it away. Just wear these glasses instead. It's like an instant quick yeah. fix. And, and actually you hit the nail, the nail on the head there because what you said is exactly the same as um, a book that I read. So I read this book on about overcoming traumas quite, quite a few years ago. And the example the guy used was gazelle. So basically lion prey on gazelle. And um, let's say there's a bunch of a herd of gazelle, a lion runs after those gazelle and the gazelle of course run away from the lion to escape. And two gazelle slip. They fall over. And the lion basically kills one of the gazelle. And then the other um, realizes that it made a narrow escape. It's crazy what actually happens. But so that gazelle that just about survived and got lucky, it goes back to the rest of the herd. And it, it's first it's shaking because it's been traumatized. There's There's some energy, there's some trauma energy going on in the body of that gazelle. But then what's amazing is the other gazelle actually role play the original traumatic event so that they, they basically pretend to chase the herd. And, and that gazelle that made a lucky escape basically refaces a, a version of that trauma. They train and reface that um, trauma several times until they realize that they're now capable of escaping and no longer are they threatened by that trauma. So they're confident that I'm not going to slip up. I can run away from, I can run away just as well as these other gazelle can. So it rebuilds that um, that confidence and what was a major threat. Okay, of course, a lion's still a threat, but no longer is it traumatized by that um, past experience because it genuinely believes that in a repeat situation, it would now be able to escape successfully. So it refaced and beat the trauma, basically. And that's what, yeah. what Tanvi is saying. Like if let, let's say that we took the modern society's approach to those gazelle, and basically we said, don't worry about replaying that situation. Let's just pretend it never happened. You know, let's just pretend that it never happened and carrying as normal. What would happen? The gazelle would go through the rest of its life traumatized. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Um yeah, and also to, to link back to the value of my coaching, imagine just taking someone, someone who's dependent on wearing glasses, put them out into like, say, the caveman times. You don't have glasses anymore. You can't use the glasses to survive. Like, how would you like react? Like, how like how would you do? Like, you wouldn't be able to do anything. Like, without those glasses, like, yeah. <laughs> you're screwed, basically. And immediately in that scenario, you understand the value of... um the Bates method and the coaching and like what other vision coaching vision coaches do. 
Um, and it's only really because we've sort of allowed our society to be to be kind of weak, um, to sort of like suppress that trauma and not face it. That's where people tend to think, well, if I just use my glasses, I w do I really need to improve my eyesight? And that's where people tend to become more like complacent and like kind of lazy. I agree. I think what 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 you've been saying, Tamvi, about um one problem with technology in society is that it interrupts the natural processes. Mm. So it, there's a natural process for healing and recovering from something. You say, "Here's the glasses." Even mm. um, if I talk about some of my coaching, it's the same. So if I'm talking about, you know, I started off with relationship coaching, but it's confidence coaching, and I coach in different areas. And what modern society does is it creates platforms like online dating and people say, how come it doesn't really work? I mean, sure, it's possible to go on some dates, but it's crazy. There's no connections happening. It's because um, a natural process, two people having a conversation and forming a connection has been um, turned into this artificial construct. Like Tinder didn't exist in caveman times. We, we're not adapted to this. It's, it's not how yeah. it's supposed to be. And it's the same with um, other avenues like speed dating. You know, the problem is in the title, speed. You know, you're meant to have normal conversations with people. In in real life, a bell doesn't ring after five minutes saying, go and move on and speak to the next person. So it's just mm. interrupting natural processes all the time. And it's like, if people can just be themselves and have normal conversations, these things happen naturally. And also what interrupts processes natural processes massively is our own fears our own insecurities our past experiences that gets in the way was actually being ourselves and that's why me and Tanvir are so passionate about honesty because it's about getting back to the natural processes stopping this you know artificial nonsense that doesn't work there's no there's no like gimmicky tactics it's about getting yourself back into you know just just it's a real way of living it's being genuine it's doing things the way you're meant to do them like uh, if i'm right like your approach to helping people with blurry vision is actually getting them to adopt the correct vision habits uh -huh. get back to the the natural vision habits that people should be having so basically yeah. getting back in touch with the natural process rather than an artificial process or a trauma uh -huh. process hundred uh percent -huh. yeah and also, like things like with online dating, it's kind of it, it, it's 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 like well, with um with the artificial lenses, it's quite weak in the approach of it because you, it doesn't really require that much bravery. You don't really like this. It you don't actually have to face like a real person in real life. The yeah. person's like hide behind a screen. Um, you tend to have to be like full project. It's very like fake, and mm -hmm. it doesn't require that much courage and bravery. Whereas yeah. like what you're doing. You need to be courageous and well. bravery. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it feels good when you earn something fair and square as well. You know, like mm. when I was with Tanvi in the coffee shop and he had a conversation with this this really nice girl and they got on well. That required bravery. Like you paid the price to make that happen. You you had to face your fears because it's not easy. I know that fears come up, nerves, and it's like, man, this this person's you know attractive, they're looking at me. I have to go and talk to them and just be myself. It's it's enjoyable and scary at the same time. And actually, before we recorded, I remember you saying that he was out with another one of my clients, and um, you actually said something which I think is is really powerful. You said that he was really really honest, and it cleared the rubbish out of your system. Mm, yeah, yeah, because one one of the things I struggled with was doing the approaches is I always felt like. Um... I always felt like nervous, like uh, like uh, what I was doing was wrong. So I just, I sort of just went hundred percent honest. And when I took the honesty approach, um, oh yeah, yeah, I just got a message saying I got a ten percent battery left. Um, That's okay. Because I'm, I'm I'm on my phone. Um, yeah. but essentially, what I found was that a lot of the women that I was talking to, when I was being honest, they thought, "No, nah, this is fine. This is like normal. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing." 100%. And that's all like cleared up a lot of like baggage that I was carrying because I always felt like is yeah. what I'm doing okay like I felt I don't know for some reason it felt like I was doing something wrong and, and interestingly uh, this is my understanding of your experience because of what you've consumed from society's content and different experiences you can have these false beliefs 
that this is wrong and this is right. But actually, honest conversations are the most natural conversations. It's how we're meant to be speaking to each other. It's literally just two people being themselves. And really, it's about what you're not doing a lot of the time rather than what you are doing. It's removing the blockages, just being open. And literally, people don't believe me when I tell them that just be honest and it works. They think, surely not, it's too good to be true. But but really, like what we're both teaching is honesty. And what you're saying is that, you know, in some cases when um, blurry vision can be linked to trauma and then you're wearing glasses and pretending that everything's fine, in a way, that's a lack of honesty. Mm, yeah, 100%. So honesty yeah. is all about being natural. And when you're being natural, having conversations isn't creepy. Creepy is when someone's being unnatural, they have a hidden agenda. And it's like, they let's say like, a guy starts a conversation with a girl and he's like, you know, I'm a little bit lost. I'm trying to find the train station, but, but he finds the girl attractive and he's hiding that fact from her. Now it's a little bit creepy because what's going on here? What's what's the agenda? Why is it a little bit off? But if you're being honest and, you know, like you said, I just think you look really nice. Wanted to say hi. If that's honest and you know what? I do feel a bit scared right now. I am nervous in this situation. The other person's immediately like, I can trust this person. They're just being themselves. And actually that gives them permission to be their selves and the best connections happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also like uh, another thing, because I've got a like, short battery left on my phone, I just wanted us to like mm. wrap it really quick in case my phone just like completely dies out. Sure. And actually, I guess the last thing that we can say is that, well, what I can say for myself is that I currently offer um, a free two hour taster session for anyone out there, either with social anxiety that wants to work on their confidence, also in that wants to um, take some steps towards building a business. Now, see, Tamve has done some coaching with me, and you like my coaching. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, the, the reason why I really enjoyed your coaching is because when I was on this business path, I sort of I didn't really know what to do. Like, I had a lot, lack of guidance. So, having coaching sort of it puts you in the right path because you sort of start to learn more about like where you should be going and how you should be um, like uh, how to set goals and how to achieve them so from that like it helps in that aspect especially if you're like a little bit directionless and um, you feel unsure like how to like set it across because with what I'm doing I have like essentially the service the product and service mm -hmm. it's just that the only thing I'm a little bit struggling with and the reason why I went to Phil was because I wanted to know more about the business aspect of it yeah. and how to make it a viable business. And um, I guess the reason why you should go to him is because you, you already got like a really good business already saying up. Um, so you've already gotten success yourself. So mm -hmm. it just kind of like adds that extra level of um, credibility. And, and the good thing is like the whole time, I know your batch is running short. It's just honesty. So I'm mm -hmm. being honest with every single person that I coach. And also people that I coach are attracted to the fact that I'm being honest with them and they're being honest with their clients. And it's just about being real, doing what works. And what I can say is that, you know, Tanvir is incredibly passionate about what he does. And even part of the reason for this video is because, so Tanvir is so passionate, but we were saying um, earlier in the first part of this recording that it's hard to come across um, as yourself on youtube when you're not actually in a conversation and and i really wanted to help tanvi bring his natural passion out that he does at events and when he's networking because there's so much value there you know there's crazy amounts of value so this is really about um me and me and tanvi having an honest conversation and recording it to help out other people because it's so rare that people have real conversations these days yeah 100 percent. you know so is there anything else that you wanted to to say? I mean Um Well, I think the only thing other thing I'd say is because you can find my like if you want coaching, you can find my website quite easily. It's quite easy okay. to remember. It's just um naturalvisionimprovement.co.uk. Um so if you want to find me, like that's my um website. Yeah. Um I'm right right now I'm just mostly focusing on the coaching aspect and I'm writing an ebook. So once the ebook mm -hmm. is done, um okay you're going to get like loads of value from that. Um, and the ebooks is actually 
going to be free for at the moment because I just want to sell the value as much value as I can possibly yeah. can. Um, just, I like and then just from that, then of course, um, because obviously I don't want to do like I'm I'm not like a salesy type of person. I don't really feel comfortable, um, putting my business from like a salesy perspective. It's just it's just better just selling like okay, this is what's worked for me. Let me share my experience. Mm-hmm. And that's what the ebook essentially contains is just my experience and the results that I've gotten for myself. And um, yeah, I think uh, you get a lot of value from it. I, I like it. It sounds great. And um, what I'll do then, um, when I upload this on, on my social media, that would see you on yours, I'll put a link to your website um, in the comment section so people can check you out, especially if you have nearsightedness and um, you want to find new ways to improve this. Why not check out Tanvi's stuff? You know, why yeah. not go to his events, Zoom events, in person events, get to know him, and um, and see what benefits you can get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Nice. No, it's, it's good right. stuff, and yeah. I think we yeah. we probably reached that natural stopping point. And yeah. if this was like speed dating, it would have been a five minute video, and a bell would have rang. <laughs> cut out all this value. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I think we'll just wrap it up now. And I, I yeah, think so. It feels, feels right. So yeah, um, be nice chatting to you, Tanvi. Enjoy the rest of, of your day and same message to everyone that um, watches this video. Yeah. Um, yeah, enjoy your day. And I'll yeah. Hopefully see you next time. Definitely. Yeah. Right. See you.